everyone, today we're going to be talking about my favourite social media platform, Instagram. I just thought I could sit down, have a little chat with you guys. I've got quite a few different like categories that I've split this up into. Profile, grid, taking photos, editing photos, posting, growth and who to follow. So there's lots of different stuff going on in this video and I just want to say that it's kind of take what I say with a pinch of salt. Instagram is meant to be fun. It's a hobby for most people. Some people work at brands and it's work. Some people do what I do and it's a bit of work and a bit of fun, but it's meant to be enjoyable. So any kind of tips I give are just to make you enjoy it more. Don't take it too seriously. It's just photos on Instagram. Is this video interesting? I don't know. Your profile is the first thing someone sees when they find you on Instagram. So that's the moment they decide whether they're gonna follow you or not. So use it as like a little bit of an Instagram CV. I think your profile photo is pretty important. A lot of people have a logo as their profile photo. You can, it does look really neat, but I think a photo of your face is the best thing. I think with all social media that applies, the more personal you make it, the more your followers feel like they can get to know you, the more likely they are gonna want to get to know you. So put a nice picture of your face. I very rarely change mine, but you can change it as often as you like. Use your profile to tell your potential new followers who you are and what they can expect if they follow you on Instagram. So your name, you could be your age if you want, or your location, and what you're into. So if you're into home decor or food, you can write what I eat for lunch every day, if that's what you're gonna put on your Instagram, or a mix of beauty and fashion and lifestyle. Just give a bit of a description of what people can expect from your Instagram. If you have any important links, you can add them there as well. If you have a blog or a YouTube channel or a brand website or your Twitter, add the link there, why not? Then they can get to know you better on other platforms as well. The whole Instagram theme grid thing is all very new to me. I didn't realize that people take their, when I say a grid, it's like when you go on your profile and you see all your photos together in a grid. People take that very seriously. People have like themes on their grid. I didn't realize that was a thing. I think I kind of have a theme because I edit my photos all the same, so they look the same, but some people can have like special borders around their photos so it looks really nice when you see it all together or they only put certain photos up at different times so it looks really symmetrical. Do what you want with your grid. I think the only time a grid or a theme is important is when new people find your Instagram page because other than that, they're just gonna see your photos on the feed. So I don't know, it's up to you whether to take the whole theme grid thing seriously or not, but it's something to think about. And I do think it's very pretty when people have like a really nice Instagram theme, but it all got a bit too much for me when I tried to do that. So now I just kind of post things that I like. But if you do want to plan out your grid more, then there is an app, which I will talk more about later in the video called VSCO Cam. And you can use that app to see what your photo will look like against your other photos before you upload it to Instagram. So it has it all laid out in a grid, the same as Instagram. You can upload it and you can see, does it look nice next to the last photo I posted? And you can decide before you put it on Instagram. I think taking your photos is just as important as editing them, probably actually more important. As I've mentioned in the past when talking about blog photography, it's all about finding the right thing to take a photo of, having the right light, the right positioning, really taking your time to get the right photo. Flat lays are huge on Instagram, that's when you lay things like flat on a surface and take a picture from above. And I think that you can also experiment with flat lays as well, using light from different angles. It doesn't have to be bird's eye view straight down, you can take it slightly from the side, I think that looks really nice. I like to really pack my flat lays full. I think it looks really nice when you've got quite a full image. But just play around, have some patience, take loads of photos. That's what I always do. I take so many photos and then I go through and pick the one that I like the most and then edit. So you're never going to get the perfect shot right away. Sometimes you do. That's always a great day. But feel free to like play around and add things in, add layers and textures. I sometimes use notebooks underneath just to add a bit of depth and that can look really nice. When I'm taking my photos for Instagram, I use square mode on the iPhone. So it's already in square, you know what it's gonna look like on Instagram. Because if you take it in like full photo mode, then you're gonna have to crop it down to square. Instagram now have the ability that you don't have to just post square, which really broke my heart. I feel like that is the best thing about Instagram, that everything is beautifully square. And when they change that, I just, I can't even deal with it at all. So I still only upload square. Editing your photos, I think this is one of the most fun bit. I don't go crazy with my editing. I know some people spend like a really long time editing their photos, but by the time I've taken a photo that I really like, I just wanna like post it or like 
keep it in my little stash of photos that I'm gonna post later, but can't really be bothered to spend a long time editing. So I have the kind of few things that I do and I'll show you in a minute how I edit my photos. I think the Instagram editing tool that's actually on Instagram is so, so good. I use that mainly all the time really. There are loads of other apps you can use. VSEO Cam has lots of filters and they're really good, but again, I still think Instagram kind of does it all. So let me talk you through now my process of taking a photo and editing it to put it on Instagram. So I'm gonna start by opening a photo that I just took, which is basically just of some flowers and a candle on some books. And I'm gonna open that up in Instagram. Now this is where I normally resize things or crop it if I need to. And then I'm just gonna click next and press this button on the right hand side which is the editing tool on Instagram. I usually start by upping the brightness quite a lot. I like my photos to be pretty bright. And then I sometimes turn the contrast down to make it a little bit softer. If I'm taking a picture outside or of the sky, I like to turn the structure up because it really defines the image. But for this one, I'm just gonna keep it down. Sometimes I turn the warmth down just to get rid of any warm tones. And I turn the highlights up just to make it a little bit brighter again and the shadows down to make it a bit softer. Sometimes I like to sharpen the image, but for this one I'm gonna keep it down. So then I just take a screenshot of that image and I go into my photos and edit that back into square mode. I then take the photo that I've just edited and I put it into Facetune. Now I don't use this app to edit my face at all, don't worry, I don't remove any wrinkles or spots or change my face shape. I just use this for the whitening tool. So this really helps to whiten an image, especially if it's a really warm toned image. This one doesn't need it that much, but. I'll show you as an example. You just rub your finger along where you want to make it white and it whitens that part of the image. It's pretty genius. And then I like to upload it into VSEO Cam to see how it looks along the other photos of, in my Instagram feed. And it's very rare that I don't like an image where it sits. It's normally just if I have like two pictures of my face in a row and it looks a bit weird. So that's pretty much it. And then I just upload it onto Instagram. I think it's worth thinking about when you're gonna post the photo, what time of day your followers are most active on Instagram. You know, if you post a photo at 4 a.m., is everyone gonna be asleep and miss it? I know it's obviously not all about the likes. This is to the people who care about how many likes they get. I think it's worth thinking about what time of day you post the photo. How long has it been since you last posted? I don't tend to post more than one, uh, like one or two photos a day. I find it quite frustrating when I'm following someone who's constantly posting photos. That kind of makes me unfollow someone. But if you like to post loads, that's your thing. But I would say tr try and space them out quite evenly. Instagram does have the edit tool now, so you can edit what you write under your photos. But really, I think the first five to 10 minutes, once you've posted a photo, everyone would have read it then. So going back and editing, I'm not sure how beneficial that is. I think it's only good if you've made like a really bad mistake. One thing I would definitely say is don't over hashtag. Hashtags I think are good when you're starting out because if you do a big kind of general hashtag like London or restaurants, then people might search those hashtags and find you. But hashtagging, oh my God, this photo is amazing or hashtag, um, I can't think of any other hashtags, but you know like the silly hashtags that aren't really hashtags? I find them, they kind of just clog up the photo and I find it really annoying when people just hashtag everything. Hashtag London, hashtag weekend, hashtag brownie, hashtag bakery, hashtag, oh, stop hashtagging please. Growth on Instagram is important to some people, so I wanted to cover that, how you can kind of grow your followers. I know a lot of people find it really frustrating that they just want more followers on Instagram and they don't know how to get it. Definitely getting more involved in the community is the same with every other platform. Comment on other people's photos, then people will see your comment and they might check out your profile there. Promote your Instagram on other channels that you're on. If you have a Twitter feed or a Facebook, tell people on there to go and follow you on Instagram. If you don't tell them, they won't do it and they won't know that you exist on Instagram. Be consistent. If you don't post a photo for weeks, then people will just forget about you. And the thing is, I know Instagram have changed it slightly, but I think when someone likes your photo, it pops up on the explore page. That's how it used to work. So the more people who are liking your photos, the more likely other people are gonna find your photos. So just be consistent. If you're not posting, you're not gonna get followers. There's a website called Iconosquare. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you can look at your kind of Instagram stats and your most liked photo and the people who like your photos the most. And there's just loads of Instagram analytics on there that are really interesting. It's good to see which photos do the best on your page because then you know to like post more of that kind of photo. If people love your outfit photos, you can post more of those. I'm a bit of an analytics geek, but if you are too, it's a very interesting website. So now the fun bit, who I love to follow on Instagram. I've got loads of Instagram feeds that I 
I'm just so obsessed with. I'm not gonna talk through every single one. What I'm just gonna do instead is link them all down below so you guys can just click and then you can look at their grid and decide for yourself if you want to follow them. Instagram is so fake and false, but that is why I love it. I feel like it knows its place in the world. Instagram is not the place you see people looking at their worst. That's Snapchat. I think Instagram's okay to be like overly pretty and planned out. That's why we all love it. So I hope you found this video a little bit interesting. Let me know if it was just completely irrelevant and I should never do a video like this again, or if you kind of liked it. I've done a few kind of blogging and YouTube tips videos in the past. So I will link a playlist here where I've got tips for how to start a blog, tips for how to start a YouTube channel, what camera equipment I use, and all kind of techie, bloggy related things in this playlist. So go have a look at that if you wanna have a watch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.